In this video, we're gonna talk about how to create drop downs with multiple selections in Google Sheets and how to work with them. So let's do an example. So I'm gonna create a quick table here. I'm gonna add a few columns. So we'll do name, date, and we'll do order. And our first column will be some names. So let's say this is Jane, Anna, and Bob. Our second column, of course, is gonna be some sort of dates. And then finally, the last one is going to be our drop down with multiple selections. So let's say this is going to be an order and they're going to have to choose between having an appetizer, dessert, doesn't matter, some sort of drop down with multiple selections. So I'm going to go ahead and select the area and we'll go to insert and go drop down. So at this point here, we have our drop down on the right. So we're going to choose our options. So I'm going to just list those here. So I'll click add another to add a few more options. And of course you can do as many as you like. Now for each one of these, you can also choose a color if you like. And if you want them to be able to choose more than one, you're gonna have to click on this, allow multiple selections. So I'm just gonna click on this, hit done. And at this point, we can just close this and you're gonna see that this area converts to dropdowns. So if I click on this, we have all those options here. And basically I should be able to choose, let's say this, this, this. And you can see how it populates up here. Now for this one, let's also make some choices. And I'll do something else for this one too. I'll make this column a little bigger so we can see all the choices here. So that's essentially how this is gonna work. Now, if I want to extend those dropdowns, I could either select this area, go to data and go to data validation and here you can see how it says C2, C4. So I can just open this and change this four to whatever number I feel is appropriate. So let's say 20. And if I had done, now it's gonna go 20 lines down like this. So it's either that, or you can just click on one of these and then go to this little box in the corner and just drag it to copy that down. So both should be fine. So you should be able to work with this. So now let me add a little bit more data here so you can see how we can work with this information. And for each one of these, I guess I'll go ahead and make some choices and maybe for some of them, I'll make no choice. So this is what we have. Now let's take a look and see what actually happens when we choose these multiple choices. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the cell next to this and then use the arrow key left. And if you look here and look up here in the actual cell, you'll see it gives me this salad, entry and dessert, all separated with a comma and a space. So that's what it's gonna do. Now, if you have only one selection, so if we look at this one right here, you can see up here, it's just that one with no commas, no spaces. So essentially that's the data we're gonna have to work with. Another thing that's probably worth to mention is that it's not gonna let you choose the same thing more than once. So if we go here and try to click on the same one, instead of copying that multiple times, it's just gonna remove it or add it. So that's the way this works. So now based on this data, if you wanted to know how many times salad was selected here, there are a couple of different ways you can do this. One, you can use something like count if, open parentheses, you can select this range of data, comma, and then as a criteria here in quotes, you can go ahead and type star, and then whatever it is you're looking for, so let's say salad, and star again. Now at this point, if I'd enter, that basically means anything that contains salad. So you can see I get four because we have one salad here, two, 
three, four. So therefore we get a count of four. Now this is not case sensitive. So if I do lowercase salad, that is also going to work. Now this method should be fine, assuming that you don't have the possibility of getting some false positives. The reason you could have it, like if you think about something like this, if I search if this contains mail, it's going to say yes, because it's not looking for a word when you use this stars, it's just looking for anything that contains that particular word in it. So this would be a match for mail as well as this would be a match for mail. Now, if you don't have cases like that and you don't have to worry about it, then something like this is fine. However, if you do have to worry about cases like that, then you want to use possibly a little different solution. And for that, what I can do, I'm going to get rid of this one. That's the count ifs example. Let me actually just zoom in here on this one so you can actually see that. So that's the formula. Now I'm going to get rid of this one and I'm going to do another formula here though. And for this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this formula. Well, let's not forget to do equal sign. Otherwise it's not a formula. We're going to do regular expression match. And it's going to ask us for text and regular expression. So as a text, I'm going to point to this cell for now, C2, comma. And as regular expression, we have to provide it in quotes. I'm going to do this forward slash B. And I'll explain you what this means in a second. And then I'm going to go salad or whatever it is you're trying to match. And then forward slash B again in quotes. Close parentheses, hit enter. And you can see it says true. And what that means is that it was able to match the word salad here in the cell. Now, if I take that formula and drag this down like this, you can see for every line that has salad in it, it's going to give me true. And for the rest of these lines, it's going to give me false. Now, what this B means, this in regular expression, means word boundary. So basically what we're saying is that we want to make sure that this is salad as a word, not contains salad. And this way you wouldn't have to worry about cases when you can accidentally match like male inside of female or something like that. The thing you should know about this though is that this is case sensitive. So if I do lowercase s for salad, it will not match any of those things because this is case sensitive by default. Now, what I can do to handle that, I can go here and put this C2 cell inside of a function called lower. And what lower function does, just to show you separately, for example, if I just go here and do lower and point to this cell over here, it will basically convert, it's asking me to copy this down, I'll do that, it will convert everything to lowercase. So if I click inside of this cell to the left, if you look here in the formula bar, you can see we have salad with an uppercase S, entry, dessert, everything with uppercase. But here we are converting all of that to a lowercase. So that's what lower function does. And now within this lowercase, we can just search in lowercase. So instead of doing it here though, in a separate column, I'm gonna get rid of this and go back to this formula and just put this C2 inside of that lower function to lowercase that text before I check if it contains this lowercase salad. And by doing this, we essentially make this not case sensitive. So now we got true, true, false is here, true, true. Now in this example, I got a whole bunch of formulas doing this. So I'm going to delete the rest of these formulas and I just want to take this first formula and adjust it in a way that it works as single formula for all of these lines. And what I'll do for that instead of this C2, I'll just make this a range. So I'll do C2 colon C. Well, I could go until eight. That should work. But for right now, I'll just go like 15. So that's going to go 15 lines down. And at this point, because we have an array inside of this formula, 
we have to convert this to an array formula. So we can do that by either pressing Control Shift Enter or Command Shift Enter, or you can just go here and manually type array formula, open parentheses, and then go after this whole thing and close parentheses, that will convert this to an array formula. So at this point, if I would enter, you can see that single formula gives me bunch of trues for lines where we have the word salad. And for the rest of the lines, we get a false. So now at this point, if I wanted to know how many times we have salad, then I need to essentially just count how many of these are true. And we can do that by doing some sort of count if here. So I'll do equals count if this is going to be the range of data, comma, and the criteria will be true, because we want to count how many of these are trues. So if I do this hit enter, you'll see we get a four. And now I can essentially just combine these formulas together. So instead of doing this, I'll just go here, copy this formula without the first equal sign, hit escape, go back to this formula, and instead of this E2, E15, I'll just delete that and I'll paste that formula right here. And if I would enter, now I have a standalone formula which should work without having this. So if I delete this, this formula now by itself should just count how many lines we have with salad in it. And just to test and make sure this works, now I'll just go here and just choose some things in some new lines. You can see I'm choosing appetizer entry. This count doesn't go up. If I go here and choose entry and a salad, the count goes up because we got a salad here. And of course, if I just go and open one of these and just choose salad, that also should increase the count. So now we know we got essentially six out of these have salad in them. Now, of course, then you can reuse this formula for other things. Before I do that though, assuming you want to continue doing this and adding more to this, you can simply just go here and remove this 15. And that will send this all the way down to the last row in the spreadsheet. And that's going to work. And this will give us the number of salads we got. So let me add a column and call this salad. And then I can essentially just grab this formula, copy it, hit escape, and paste it right here. And in this one, I can just change this word to whatever it is you're targeting. So again, this is going to be lowercase because we're lowercasing the data. So for example, if I just go ahead and add appetizer here, hit enter, it's going to say we got three of those. And that should make sense because we got this, we got this, we got this. And of course, you can just repeat this for every option. Now, if you wanted to do that, you could also do some fancy concatenation here to drag this formula down, but I'll leave that part out of this. So there you go. That's your multi-choice dropdowns. If at any point you decide you want to get rid of these, the way you do that, you select this area, you go to data, you go to data validation, and here's that validation. So you'll just click on this little trash icon and you'll see all those drop downs are gone. It will leave the data with comma separation. So this is a great addition in Google Sheets. It's been a while since I've seen something nice. Let me know how you like this and if you have any questions in comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.